Businesses are getting spooked by Trump's trade policy. President Donald Trump's aggressive and wildly unpredictable use of tariffs is spooking American business groups, which have long formed a potent force in his Republican Party. Corporate America was blindsided last week when Trump threatened to impose crippling taxes on Mexican imports in a push to stop the flow of Central American migrants into the United States. The two sides reached a truce Friday after Mexico agreed to do more to stop the migrants. But by Monday, such whipsawing is now a hallmark of Trump's trade policy. The president repeats business groups, already uncomfortable with Trump's attempts to stem immigration, are struggling to figure out where to stand in the fast-shifting political climate. They have happily supported businesses losing, said Rick Tyler, a Republican strategist and frequent Trump critic. He calls himself, it was a good wake-up call for business, James Jones, chairman of Monarch Global Strategies and a former U.S. ambassador to Mexico, said of Trump's abrupt move to threaten to tax Mexican goods. Just last week, the sprawling network led by the billionaire industrialist Charles Koch announced the creation of several political action committees focused on policy U including one devoted to free trade U to back Republicans or Democrats who break with Trump's trade policies. A powerful force, the Chamber of Commerce, too, is in the early phases of disentangling itself from the Republican Party after decades of loyalty. The Chamber Few expect the chamber or business-backed groups like the COP network to suddenly embrace Democrats in a significant way. But even a subtle sh Trump's boundless enthusiasm for tariffs has upended decades of Republican trade policy that favored free trade. It has left the part Trump's tariffs are taxes paid by American importers and are typically passed along to their customers. They can provoke re Knowing the rules helps us plan for the future, said Jeff Schwager, president of Sartori, a cheese company that has had to contend with retaliatory tariffs in Mexico in an earlier dispute. Trump seems unfazed. Myron Brilliant, head of international affairs at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, went on CNBC on Monday to decry the weaponization of tariffs as a threat to the U.S. economy and to relations with trading partners. Trump responded by phoning in to the network to declare I guess he's not so brilliant and defend his trade policies. Tariffs, he said, are a beautiful thing. Trump can afford to be confident about his grip over the party, roughly 9 in 10 rank and file Republicans support his performance as president, according to the latest Gallup polling. So Republicans, but last week's flare-up over the Mexico tariffs may prove to be a pivotal juncture. The stat was especially this really came out of left field, said Daniel Ajacho, a trade lawyer at Dickinson Wright. It was something we Congress was already showing signs of wariness, especially over Trump's decision to dust off a little used provision of trade law to slap tariffs on trading partners. Section 200 Trump has deployed that provision to tax imported steel and aluminum. And he's threatening, Congress is considering bipartisan legislation to weaken the president's authority to declare national security tariffs. In doing so, the legislation has stalled in Congress this spring. But on Tuesday, congressional reluctance to challenge Trump could be tested in coming months. Lawmakers may balk, likewise, taxing auto imports you an idea that has virtually no support outside the White House you would likely meet furious resistance. So would any moot, for all their disenchantment with Trump, the Chamber of Commerce may yet find it hard to break its ties to the party. Though the Chamber says, U.S. Trump walks back Mexico tariffs. Youth story behind the UFSI takes major steps toward Get up to speed on your morning commute with Fortune's newsletter. Hot, 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 hot,